sister Justice Mukta Gupta, my esteemed sister and brother judges, Honorable Justice Pradeep Nandajog, former judge of Delhi High Court and former Chief Justice of Bombay High Court, other former respectable judges of the High Court, Shri Chetan Sharma, Additional Solicitor General of India, Shri K.K. Manan, Chairman Bar Council of Delhi, Shri Mohit Mathur, President Delhi High Court Bar Association, Shri Jatan Singh, Vice President Delhi High Court Bar Association, Shri Sandeep Sharma, Secretary Delhi High Court Bar Association, Shri Sanjay Lau, Standing Council Criminal, Government of NCT of Delhi, Shri Santosh Tripachi, Standing Council, Government of NCT of Delhi, Standing Councils of the Central and State Government, Executive Members of the Delhi High Court Bar Association, Office Bearers of Bar Council of Delhi and other District Bar Associations, Senior Advocates, Members of the Bar, Members of Print and Electronic Media, Family Members of Justice Mukta Gupta, Ladies and Gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. We have assembled here to bid farewell to Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta, who has been serving on the bench of this court since 2009. Justice Gupta was born on 28th of June, 1961, and finished her schooling from Montfort School. She per pursued her graduation in science stream and graduated in zoology honors from Hindu College University of Delhi in the batch of 1980. Thereafter, she enrolled in the LLB course at Campus Law Center, University of Delhi. She completed law in 1983 and enrolled as an advocate with Delhi Bar Council in 1984. Justice Gupta's practice and as an advocate was spread across diverse subject matters, including but not limited to criminal, constitutional, service, and civil laws. In 1993, she was appointed as additional public prosecutor in Delhi High Court. Thereafter, in 2001, she was appointed as the standing counsel criminal for the government of Delhi. Although Justice Gupta has contributed across the spec spectrum of subject matters, her involvement and contribution to criminal law stands out as exceptional. She was involved in significant criminal cases of her time, both at the Supreme Court and high court level, including the Parliament and Redford shootout case, Jessica Lal case, Naina Sahani case, Nitish Katara case, only to name a few. Notably, Justice Gupta was also appointed as a special counsel for CBI. During this tenure as well, she was involved in various significant cases of her time, such as the Naval War Room Leak case and Pridarshini Mattu case. Even a cursory look at these cases would reveal that the significance of these cases in the development of criminal law in India. It would certainly be appropriate to say that Justice Gupta's journey has progressed synonym synonymously with the development of criminal law. She has not only witnessed a phase of momentous development in the criminal law, but has also contributed immensely to it and ultimately to the society at large. Justice Gupta was included as a member in Delhi Legal Service Authority. During this tenure, she was deeply involved in the issues concerning rehabilitation of delinquent women, juveniles, and prisoners. Upon elevation, Justice Gupta brought immense expertise on the bench and continued to contribute towards the cause of justice. A look at her tenure on the bench of this court reflects a keen approach towards administration of law as well as towards legal policy. The intervention of the judicial side has played a significant role in streamlining criminal procedures and in safeguarding procedural rights of under trials and convicts. Even on sentencing, Justice Gupta's approach reflected a fine balance between the competing rights of society and the individual. In a long career, Justice Gupta has contributed immensely to the advancement of the cause of justice. She is certainly a role model, especially for the women practitioners. She has always encouraged women to litigate and has led by example on and off the bench. I am certain that Justice Gupta's career 
would leave a lasting impact on the society and would inspire many men and women out there to follow the path laid by her. As we bid farewell to you, Sister Mukta, today, I, on my behalf and behalf of my colleagues on the bench, congratulate you for a long successful career in the profession. I can confidently say that with your services rendered in different capacities, the system has benefited immensely. Today, you are leaving the system better than you had found it. Before I, before I conclude, I borrow some words from Ralph Emerson, a 19th century poet, who observed the meaning of success in the following words, and I quote, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has bred easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. I congratulate, unquote, I congratulate and extend my best wishes to your esteemed family members. On behalf of this court, I wish you all the best for your future endeavors. We pray to your good health for all the times to come. Thank you and Jai Hind. Honorable the Chief Justice, honorable members of the one of the best courts, if not the best court in India, our proud Delhi High Court. Justice Mukta Gupta in special. Justice Mukta Gupta's family members. Chief Justice retired Bombay High Court and the eminent and inimitable Justice Pradeep Nandra Jog, with whom Justice Gupta shared a very long, enriching uh, dispensation of justice. We all saw that in court number three. It was, so it was referred to in various forms pre the vegetarian lunch session. And it was said that it was uh, a bit of a trepidation for lawyers to appear before both of them, especially when they were in tandem. But having said that, <clears throat> the moot point was that both of them were so thorough on the brief and with Justice Gupta, knowing in her inimitable sixth sense, she could catch what was not in the pleadings, though Justice Nandra Job, I must say, that you were a stickler to pleadings and faulted 99% of the lawyers, including most of the distinguished lawyers who are present here. And I also take note of the distinguished gathering of senior advocates here. And I cannot but take note of uh, the former president of the bar, former additional solicitor general, Sri Chandiyok, and also <coughs> Abhijat, we don't forget people who have adorned good positions here. All the executive members, all the CGSEs, all the people uh, who are joined virtually, to all of them, this is a moment to celebrate 39 years of unstinted, undaunted service to the cause of dispensation of justice, both this side and that side. I vividly remember that when I was late uh, in the chambers, there used to be just two people who used to trudge along, the father and the daughter duo of Wazir Saab and Justice Mukta Gupta, late into their car which would pull up right next to the, uh, in, in the front porch. That was the commitment which you saw, and, and she said so in telling terms. I did not see a sunset for 23 years. That really speaks a lot, ma'am, of your deep, enduring commitment that you have so wonderfully discharged that you will be remembered. Remembered you will be also for many other things. I am a person who, I do have a note 
but the registrar general said, what good is it? You're not going to speak out of it in any case. But I must quote Rabindranath Tagore. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. Justice Gupta, of the 300 destitute girls that you rehabilitated who were from GB Road, you gave them vocation, you gave them respect, you gave them a kiosk where they worked from. Out of them, you got 25 girls married by your own personal efforts. This is a standing ovation. And precisely, Justice Gupta, service, as our Shastras also say, is one of the highest forms of worship. We are not named out of coincidences. Our parents name us after a lot of consultation. And parents in consultation with the others name us. And your parents named you Mukta. I must refer in advert to a shlok in the Gita, which is in the 15th chapter. It's the fifth shlok. Dvandvair Vimukta. Your name finds mention in this fifth. Nirmana Moha, Jita Sangha Dosha, Adhyatma Nitya, Vinirvitta Kamaha, Dvandvair Vimukta, Sukhdukha Sangyair, who he is freed from duality is mukt. And one of the ways of mukti is what you have already done. That is to serve the underdog, to serve truth, to serve justice, and to, and to serve it by calling a spade a spade. You never held back justice, Gupta. You gave it when it was due, and and you and you never couched your uh, your feelings in any diplomatic manner. You were forthright, and that makes you one of the best that we have had. Lest it be said <clears throat> that Justice Gupta was only confined for the prosecutor and for the memorable uh, criminal matters that your ladyship did, there is also a very impressive side on the civil side, which few people know of. And I am to advert to Hoffman Roche versus Sipla, which is 2015, RFA OS 92 of 2012, which is referred to as a standard text all across the IP jurisdictions, where your ladyship distinguished between product and substance, said that 3D is a deeming provision in the legal sense, but in a technical sense, it cannot be presumed that once the patent or the patent application for a new form of a known substance is rejected, abandoned, then the new form is covered under a prior patent relating to that substance. The use of the work product and substance in sections 2.1.J and 3.D is therefore telling. In that, the legislative intent appears clearly to demonstrate that all substances may not qualify as products under the Act, whilst the latter are only those substances that are patent eligible. I shall not bore the company with what constitutes claim constructions though it would be very educative for all of you. But be that as it may, <clears throat> your ladyship interpreted infringement in two steps. The determination as to the meaning and scope of the patent claims asserted to be infringed, and the second step to compare the properly construed claim with the device accused of infringement. The parts of the claim which your ladyship has laid down 
include the preamble transition phase and the body. And the transition phase includes what you have held, comprising, consisting, consisting essentially of, having, wherein, characterized by. <clears throat> of these terms, some are open-ended, such as comprising, which means that if the claims contains the three elements, so on and so forth. But this is just to highlight your incisive grip on a field of IP, which is considered a niche field. And it was not without reason that for your contribution, as the you were recognized as the first woman judge in India, who was one of the first, first most 50 influential persons on the IP law in 2020, featuring just next to justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg of the United States Supreme Court. So lest we confine her ladyship only to that part of the high court where peshis and remands and bails and appeals, and when it comes to appeals, 300 of them, 300 of them decided and washed off till 2019, uh, prompting the Chief Justice, pre-vegetarian lunch session, sir, to say, that we can dispense with a criminal division bench. But on that's on the lighter side, of course. But without quoting a European or an English author, no speech is considered good enough. So apart from the Gita, which is religion neutral, and so apart from whatever has been quoted of Rabindranath Tagore, unless there is a European touch to it, judges like you would say, oh, it's worthless. <laughs> so Louis Farrakhan, as the name goes, and he may be anybody, but he said a good thing, which he said, there really can be no peace without justice. There can be no justice without truth. And there can be no truth unless someone rises up to tell you what the truth is. And so when it comes to truth, Justice Shakdar, if you were to see the Mangalacharan of the Srimad Bhagavat, the God that is referred there is Satyam Param Bhimahi. Truth is the highest. Because truth doesn't change. Everything else is changing in the world. So that truth, that eternal truth, Dvandvair Vimuktaha, Jitasanga Dosha, that truth, we, to end this rather unwanted philosophical diatribe, I can wish you, Justice Mukta Gupta, a very happy, joyous, more healthy, a more healthy retired life. Please come this side and contribute in the Honorable Supreme Court with your expertise in all fields that you have touched. You have touched lives, you have touched human beings. The affection here is telltale. The affection in this S block was also telltale. Uh, people having come to you, come, coming into your chamber, especially the younger uh, children, touching your feet, and I could see a lump in your throat which others did not see, but I could feel it. And of course, those young girls and ladies who made a video of Justice Gupta of a life and times which made her, which made her cry. And it was indeed emotional. This is a somber moment, but this is also a moment of great celebration. 39 years of unsullied, uh, remarkable service to the institution. For what I do, I dedicate it to you, Lord, so that none remains with me. If none remains with me, then I am free of dualities. If I am free of dualities, then dvandvair vimukta jitasanga dosha. It is that way. Honorable Chief Justice Sthish Chandar Sharma ji, Justice Mukta Gupta ji, companion judges, former Chief Justice Bombay High Court Pradeep Nandra Jogi, 
additional solicitor general just spoke spoken whatever you say chetan sharma ji standing counsel criminal civil president shri mohit mathur ji secretary shri sandeep sharma ji former president shri chindyok ji abhijat ji ladies and gentlemen present on behalf of the bar council of delhi it gives me immense pleasure to bid farewell to justice mukta gupta ji after being on bench for 14 years more most of us have known her for the past many decades when she was first appointed as additional public prosecutor in delhi high court and then as the first female standing counsel criminal for the government of nct of delhi however my association with justice mukta gupta ji goes back during the innumerable interaction we have had and the various lessons we got to learn about the profession from her father late bajit singh ji who was always a guiding light for many of us entering the profession this legacy has been well taken forward and higher by her and her brother mr mukul gupta a senior advocate in so many years as a judge justice mukta gupta had adorned almost every roster whether civil on the original side criminal matrimonial rent control ipr arbitration etc not just her command and understanding over various facets of law arising from different branches what really always stood out is her endeavor to do complete justice at all times this can be seen from the fact that in the past nearby one year since holding the criminal division bench she has disposed of more than 300 regular appeals relating to persons in custody apart from adjudicating fresh matters both civil and criminal at this rate even we criminal lawyers would have to look towards a retirement plan as the standing counsel she had been an outstanding prosecutor and most importantly a fair and honest person which can be seen from the fact that she forms part of ncr ncert eighth standard curriculum where while describing various professions she has been featured as a role model for the profession of the public prosecutor her capacity to deal with the toughest of matters can be seen from the anecdote from the jessica lal murder case i remember that i was there in that case also you know madam when the matter came before the honorable court during the course of arguments she was being continuously quizzed by the bench on various lacunas in the matter to this she said that i know that my ship is in deep water but i will sail it through the bench retorted that your ship is already sunken she immediately replied that i will sail my sunken ship to the shore after conversion of the acquittal by the trial court into conviction by the same bench the newspaper carried the caption that the lady who sailed her sunken ship to the shore <laughs> though my lord has already elaborated about her conducting the cases on a criminal side being additional public prosecutor the standing counsel nobody knows better than me opposed each other to thin nail but outside we took the tea coffee in her chamber 
While we all know of her leadership's work on the judicial side, little do we realize the amount of work she has done even on the administrative side for she has always chosen to behind the screen. She was instrumental in opening up medical facility in Dwarka for judicial officers and their families during the times of COVID and ensured that timely and adequate medical assistance, including medicines and ventilators were available to them, which has saved so many lives during the testing times of the pandemic. Her leadership played a pivotal role in opening up of the crash facility in Delhi High Court for the members of the bar, High Court staff, and even litigants. A strong advocate of women and child rights as well as empowerment of the oppressed, she has been holding the Juvenile Justice Committee meeting regularly and had recently launched interactive educational videos on cyber uh, stalking by coordinating with several stakeholders, including Delhi Police, in a matter involving rape with a three-year-old girl, Justice Mukta Gupta ji, passed detailed guidelines on the nature of questions that should be put to a child witness who is a victim of a such offense in the witness box. At the end, I would like to say that we will all dearly remember your long and illustrious career as a lawyer, as a judge, and most importantly, as a champion of social causes. You will be remembered for years to come, for the coming generation, right from their childhood, days when they will read about you in their school books, to reading your judgment, which has established a better and a socially just society where respect for one's rights and liberties have trumped everything. I salute your simple city, ma'am. Thank you very much. A very good evening to Honorable Chief Justice Delhi High Court, Honorable Justice Siddharth Nadur, Honorable Justice Manmohan, Honorable Justice Rajiv Shankar, Honorable Justice Suresh Kumar Kat, Honorable Justice Nazmi Waziri, Honorable Justice Sanjeev Sazdeva, Honorable Justice Bhivu Bakru, Honorable Justice B. Kameshwar Rao, Honorable Justice Yashwan Verma, all the esteemed judges of the Honorable Delhi High Court, Honorable Justice Pradeep Nandrajo, former Chief Justice of Bombay High Court, Mr. Chetan Sharma, additional solicitor general of Union of India, Mr. K.K. Manan, chairman BCT, Mr. Mohit Mathur, President, Delhi High Court Bar Association. Mr. Jatan Singh, Vice President, Delhi High Court Bar Association. Mr. Sandeep Sharma, Secretary, Delhi High Court Bar Association. Mr. Sanjay Law, Standing Council Criminal, Government of City of Delhi. All the scholarly ASCs, Government of City of Delhi, and Standing Council of Union of India. The executive members of Delhi High Court Bar Association, senior advocates, learned member of the bar, family members of the Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta, and everyone present here. Today we have assembled here to bid farewell to Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta, a dignified and august judge of this Honorable Court. Upon her retirement from an outstanding and illustrious service to this institution for 14 years, born on 28 June 1961, Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta completed her schooling from Montfort School, Delhi. After graduating from Hindu College, Delhi University in BSc Geology in 1980, Honorable Justice Gupta obtained her LLB degree from prestigious Campus Law Center, Faculty of Law, Delhi University in 1983. She later got enrolled with the Delhi Bar Council in 1984. In 1993, Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta was appointed as an additional public prosecutor in Delhi High Court. Later, she became the first ever women standing council criminal for GNCTD in the year 2000. As a Delhi government counsel, she has appeared in many criminal cases, including parliament attack case, Red Fort shootout case, Jessica Lal murder case, Naina Sahni murder case, Nitish Katara murder case, and so on. Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta was also member of Delhi Service Authority and had been associated with issue and programs for rehabilitation of destitute women, 
juveniles and prisoners. Honorable Justice Gupta has worked as a special counsel CBI and has represented the agency in important cases, which includes Neval War Room Lee case, Priyadarshini Mattu case, Madhumita Sharma murder case. Honorable Justice Gupta took the charge as an additional judge of the Delhi High Court on 23rd October 2009 and was made a permanent judge in 2014. In the year 2019, Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta was appointed as a special judge in a special court constituted under Unlawful Activities Act 1967 to examine whether the Student Islamic Movement of India, known as SIMI, should be declared as an unlawful association under that act. Honorable Justice Gupta has always adhered to her principle and her single-minded devotion to work is legendary. As a guardian of constitution, my ladyship has applied her judicial acumen in series of judgment to protect the basic rights that all the persons are entitled to. She has been truly blessed with extraordinary professional integrity and competence. During her tenure as a judge, Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta has decided numerous crucial cases. She has dealt with diverse sensitive questions of law which resulted in subject matter of so many well-crafted judgment by her. As a judge, she has adjudicated a number of significant cases, including a case against Arnab Goswami, a news anchor and a journalist for defaming Shashi Tharoor, a Congress leader. In another case, my ladyship has noted, Indian law did not force the right to repetition as a fundamental right and refused to allow a plea for withdrawing of an army press release alleging bribery by a retired army officer. In April 2020, Honorable Justice Gupta directed the AIMS New Delhi to provide medical treatment to an HIV-positive woman who has been denied access to the health care. There are so many other important cases of my leadership which I want to mention today, but due to paucity of time, it is not feasible for me to do so. We all are conscious of the reality that decision-making as a judge is a challenging task in which support and cooperation of the family is very essential. Family is always a source of strength and encouragement. Today, on behalf of Government of NCT of Delhi and my team representing the Government of NCT of Delhi in this Honorable Court, and my own behalf, I convey our best wishes to Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta and her family. May Almighty grant them good health, success, and all the happiness in years to come. I take this opportunity to wish Honorable Justice Gupta a great success in all her future endeavors and an active and fulfilling next chapter beyond bench. Honorable the Chief Justice, Justice Satish Chandra Sharma Ji, Honorable Justice Mukta Gupta Ji, other Honorable Judges of the High Court of Delhi, Justice Nandra Job, former Judge of this Court and former Chief Justice, Bombay and Rajasthan High Courts, Learned Additional Solicitor General of India, Mr. Chetan Sharma Ji, Mr. Jatan Singh and Mr. Sandeep Sharma, Vice President, Honorary Secretary of the Delhi High Court Bar Association, other members of the Executive Committee of the DHCBA, former presidents of this High Court and the other office, bear, former bear, office bearers of the High Court Bar Association, Mr. K.K. Manan, Chairman and other distinguished members of the Bar Council of Delhi, Mr. Santosh Tripathi, Standing Council Government of NCT of Delhi, office bearers of the District Court Bar Associations, some of the senior councils who have come, today I see them for the first time, and cherished members of the bar, friends and family members of Justice Mukta Gupta, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The atmosphere in this hall really speaks for itself. A general melancholy coupled with the revelry that takes place on the last day of the court. It has been a very long time since we had bid farewell to a retiring judge who was not merely serving on the bench for some years, but over the span of her career came to become one of the most formidable counsels especially on the criminal side, and headed the state's prosecution and then adorned the bench of this honorable court with her prowess as a fiercely dedicated and a fair judge. I doubt there is a single person present here who would disagree with me and knows fully well the privilege it has been to have been able to call her a colleague, a friend, or even an opponent in the last four decades. On behalf of the Delhi High Court Bar Association, allow me at the very outset to express our disappointment today as we have assembled to bid farewell to Justice Mukta Gupta, 
Permit me further to express my personal dismay as your association with the bar and bench here that has spanned over four decades culminates albeit formally. And on this warm summer day as we are to break for the ensuing crimp court vacation, as nostalgia finds its way in my address, do forgive my lack of decorum and the choice of words. Some goodbyes do hurt more than the others. Let us briefly look at the past for a moment. The speakers before me have said much of my ladyship's early years, and surely her contemporaries are the ones who ought to and have shed light on that era. If I may say so, some things we learn as we live, but some things are inherent in us and in our blood. Justice Mukta Gupta is the daughter of a true legal luminary of this court, late Shri Wazir Singh Ji, a most seasoned advocate, a former bar council member and a stalwart of this institution. To say the least, he would be so proud that you have kept his family flag flying high. Justice Gupta's superannuation is not only a dent to the bench, but a loss to the entire criminal side as well. Over the years, we had come to accept her as a most astute and a fair judge for the criminal roster on the single bench as well as the division bench. I am fortunate to have had the privilege to appear before her and plead my cases. Being on the criminal side for most of my litigating career, I not only learned the law from my lords, but also had the opportunity to shape myself as a counsel under her guidance and countless courtroom interactions. As fondly as I used to get relief from her court, I will surely miss her dismissals as well with a firm yet smiling, sorry, Mr. Mathu. Only a few weeks ago, we have concluded arguments for a murder appeal. And while my, my mind was occupied with the evidence of that case, I did not realize until then that I had left the courtroom as the last time I would close a file before your Lordship and say, obliged my Lords. That was a bittersweet moment. And I realize on the days like these, how fleeting these moments are. Our days are truly ticking away. And every once in a while, we ought to stop and appreciate being together, learning from one another and doing what we know best to help this institution grow. Just as Mukta Gupta's career is a testament to this collective effort by the bench and the bar here in Delhi to bring glory to the profession and the institution. Any counsel on the criminal side with some standing in the state of Delhi, or let's say who practices here, knows Justice Mukta Gupta, be it by her reputation or by personal experience or appearance before her court, and knows fully well to not only be a master of his facts and the applicable law, but to be fair, diligent, and responsible while presenting his case. Having been wrapped on several occasions, I had come to teach my briefing counsels to be extra careful whenever it was her courtroom. After putting in almost 25 years at the bar, Justice Mukta Gupta was elevated to the Delhi High Court. And what followed was 14 years of untiring efforts by my lord to serve this bench to the best of her abilities and gave to us and this court one of the finest judges in history. Over her long illustrious career, Justice Mukta Gupta has seen every type of case as a counsel as well as, as a judge. Sensational headline grabbers to the cases that involved saving the common man, as I said earlier. It will not be appropriate to single out case titles as my lord e gave equal care and attention to all. I can only say there are cases my lords have adjudicated that are cited by criminal counsels, including me, on a daily basis, cases at the tip of our tongues. That truly is enough said. I am certain we will cite these for the times to come, remembering the era that was. As president of the Delhi High Court Bar Association, I acknowledge that Justice Gupta's demitting office comes as a great loss to the bar bench as well as to the people of the city. To many of us, in fact, she had guided us like an elder sister in this profession sitting on the bench. I feel it appropriate to acknowledge another fact. There was a time when Justice Mukta Gupta was one of the few women counsels on the criminal side, and then one of the few women judges of this court. And today we are able to see far more women entering the profession, excelling at the bar and adorning this bench, a positive sign of increasing inclusivity and accessibility of the legal profession as well as of the judiciary. That being said, Justice Mukta Gupta, without a doubt, has been an inspiration to all the young girls who are studying hard for the legal education and are entering the profession. And my lords, you have shown them that a woman need not just survive, but has every potential to thrive. Since my early years, and maybe even today, there is a thought process that believes 
this criminal side criminal law practice is not meant or is suitable for women justice mukta gupta stands tall today as someone who has broken all such mental shackles and defeated such notions the nation can only go forward if we all go forward together leaving no one behind one thing i noticed over the years was that justice mukta gupta would come down hard on our clients sometimes and i dare not ask but i'm sure that more than half our hands would shoot up if i were to ask if my lords had scolded us defense counsels or prosecutors at some point or the other permit me to say we on the criminal side are a slightly different breed as adamant and persuasive as we may have been we could not circumvent your strict scrutiny of facts and the overall adjudication process adopted by you lords to be honest we knew when we deserved the carrot and when we deserved the stick however it is that strict care that you put into your work that guided us to be fair and just counsels in the end looking beyond the best interests of our clients and upholding the sanctity of the institution while we come and go this institution would must continue to be preserved and protected from the unjust as in our every reference i must now conclude held by today with a heavy heart the memories are overwhelming and the goodbye is imminent my lord justice mukta gupta i on behalf of the members of the delhi high court bar association wish you farewell and wish you all the luck happiness and contentment as another era of your life begins we thank you for leaving us with memories to cherish and a standard to be followed but cannot forego formally extending you the honorary membership of the delhi high court bar association a tradition that doesn't truly allow you to leaving this institution while you demit your office to her family members i would only say please take care of mukta ma'am and to ma'am i would say we are just a phone call away specially acquainted of your hospitality i can only say i assure you we will reach immediately thank you ma'am thank you so much honorable the chief justice justice satish chand sharma my esteemed brother and sister companion judges honorable mr justice pradeep nandrajao former judge of this court and former chief justice rajasthan and bombay high court mr chetan sharma learned additional solicitor general mr k k manan chairman bar council mr sanjeev nasia vice chairman bar council of delhi office bearers and members of the bar council of delhi mr mohit mathur president mr jatan singh vice president and mr sandeep sharma honorary secretary delhi high court bar association and the executive members of the delhi high court bar association mr santosh tripathi standing counsel civil and mr sanjay law standing counsel criminal government of nct delhi Mr. Amarjit Singh Chandyok, Senior Advocate; Mr. Sanjay Jain, Senior Advocate and Additional Solicitor General; Senior Advocates, Members of the Bar, District and Session Judges, Ladies and Gentlemen. Good evening to all of you. Paul Lokyo said, and I quote: "What is success? It is being able to go to bed each night with your soul at peace. God has been kind enough." to me that i have been able to be at peace with myself and everybody till date with all the hits and misses in each innings of my life i stand here today with the utmost satisfaction and content contentment to have lived my life and performed all my functions and duties on my own terms with righteousness we are four siblings the eldest being my brother mr mukul gupta senior advocate an elder and younger sister achla and minakshi since my school days i was the one those studious girls who was who knew nothing except studies clad in jeans and kurta with books my side by side this prompted my parents to advise me to become a doctor though hard work always plays a great role in shaping one's career and life but destiny has its own ways 
despite the fact that my answers to five mark questions were absolutely correct. They were marked incorrect and I missed my medicine by one mark. So from a white coat to a black coat, which is what I switched on. My second innings of life started after I completed my LLB course from the Campus Law Center in the year 1983. Though before joining, I even went to the, pro before joining the profession, I did a course in journalism also. After enrollment as an advocate in April 1984, I started my practice with my father, who was a then standing counsel income tax department and standing counsel Union of India in this court. My father insisted that before you start arguing, you should be thorough with drafting and pleadings. I even prepared a ready reckoner of the judgments on the income tax, which I could never sit with bench. It was the era in this court when getting a notice issued in a petition was like 90% battle won. Unlike now, rules mandating advanced service to respondent and most of the counsel for the respondent states, I accept notice even if the court is not inclined to do so. <laughs> he would always advise that even though every matter teaches you something new till the end of your career, but start appearing in the courts only after you have built a solid foundation. Since me and my brothers, bo brother both were working with our father, Justice Sunanda Bhandare, a mentor to both of us, once said, to, once said, you don't grow under a banyan tree, so branch out from your father. This is how my brother, who was then an advocate on record, shifted to his civil practice, and I joined Mrs. Avnish Alawat, advocate for a short stint of one year, where, where after I was appointed as an additional public prosecutor in January 1993. I am grateful to Mrs. Elawat for that hand-holding she did at that time. I never wanted to be a judge, but just to test my ability, I appeared for the interview for the Delhi High Higher Judicial Services in the year 2000, where I was selected at merit number one. I was very clear that I would like to continue with my practice. When the results were announced and we were to join, all the batchmates had got their medical done, which included Justices Chandrasekhar, Yogesh Kanna, Talwan Singh, Rajneesh Bhatnagar accepting me. It is then everybody realized that I was serious in not joining the DHJS. So the batchmates requested that in case you don't want to join, go and resign so that we can join, otherwise they will wait for other 15 days. <laughs> The very next day, I was before the Honorable Lieutenant Governor with my resignation. The then Honorable Lieutenant Governor looked at me, then at my letter, then again at me and said, would you like to be our additional standing counsel criminal in the High Court? I thought for a minute and said, yes. From then, the onward journey of nine years, one year as additional standing counsel and eight years as standing counsel criminal. I am thankful to Justice Devinder Gupta, who also facilitated in shaping my career as a standing counsel, criminal government of NCT. I am grateful to Justice Badr Durez Ahmed for helping me tide over the difficult times as a standing counsel. I am also grateful to Justice Usha Mehra for giving me that opportunity to do something really meaningful, which changed the very thought process of my life. In a petition which was pending for 10 years for rehabilitation of women at GB Road, and nothing concrete had been done, she said, she would be happy if we could effect, effect, effectively settle down even a few of such women. And then the entire exercise of planning execution started when we were able to rescue more than 300 minor girls from GB Road. And while they were lodged in the protective home, gave them psychological help and meaningful rehabilitation measures, including reintegration into their families when they all had some vocation or the other by which they could earn around eight to 10,000 per month. Even in my wildest imaginations, I could have not thought that in this process, we would be able to perform the marriages of 25 girls and happily settle them in the, their lives. While monitoring the rescue operations, interacting with those girls, the realization what those girls go through physically and mentally dawned on me. I shared myself into their protector, psychologist, trainer, and above all a mother. 
I now had more than one daughter to look after. In life, most people fail to notice the opportunities that come their way. And many who notice the opportunities fail to utilize them. As a standing counsel, I tried that everybody should be doing all kinds of matter, but every brief, which was more than 20 volumes, landed back in my life at the 11th hour. However, I never said that I can't do. Accepting every challenge that came my way, resulting in the decisions in some of the most challenging matters referred today. It is in this process of evolution in my career that Justice A.P. Shah, Justice Madan B. Laku, and Justice Mughal Mudgul reposed confidence in me and gave me the opportunity to serve as a judge of this esteemed institution. I shall be ever grateful to them as I was destined to be a judge despite refusing DHDS, I was here again in the role of a judge. I am grateful to my mentors and seniors with whom I shared the bench. Justice Madan B. Lukur, Justice Vikram D. San. I sat with Justice Dandrajo on the division bench for the large, longest time and from him I learned a lot about the skills to manage the court and decide the matters if efficiently and quickly. I am grateful to all my seniors on the bench who guided me in my initial days as a judge and from whom I learned that Every new judge who steps inside needs some hand-holding and guidance, which I try to emulate till date. I am grateful to Justice Indra Manaji for being by my side in all difficult times. Delhi High Court is a unique court in the country. Both the judges and lawyers here come from all walks of life, from different regions, from different parts of country, but all with the same motto. For me... Judging was not like performing a divine duty. Judges, while granting relief, don't do charity. It is the right of the litigant which the court recognizes. As I stand here today, I feel a sense of great pride. The pride of being a part of this institution, having served this institution, the pride of working with my brother and sister judges who are like a family to me. I will also feel the pride of having heard and engaged in legal discussion with all the lawyers who have appeared in my court. Without the able assistance of counsels, no court can come to a just and correct decision. As a junior judge, I had the privilege of being mentored by some of the finest judges of our court. I hope I was in, able to, in turn able to guide my junior colleagues, whatever they deemed fit, to, whenever they deemed fit to seek my advice. I strongly believe that our High Court is one of the best in the country because of the trust and confidence we all repose amongst each other. We may, we may sit in different benches and handle different rosters, but, but behind all the work, we are one unit, one family. As a judge of this institution for the last 14 years, I have dedicated my life to the cause of justice. To her is human, and I'm sure I also made mistakes along the way. But I did my best to ensure that whatever my, may have come, the outcome of my decision for the parties involved, the eventual victory was that of justice. In all these years, I have endeavored to discharge this honorable duty with a clean, conscious, absolute deference to the letter, of, letter and spirit of law. If in the process I have ever hurt anyone's feeling, I seek forgiveness. My message to the younger bar, you cannot grow unless you believe in yourself. If, you for faith, if you have faith in yourself, it's your faith in yourself which gives you the strength to cross every hurdle. No profession is a cakewalk. No one gets in a platter. You have to earn your place. I still remember when I, I went to join as an APP on the 23rd January 93, one of the col colleagues commented, oh, you are the one who doesn't know criminal. I said, don't worry. There'll be nothing missing. And within less than two months, I was arguing death references and the rest is history. 
In 2013, when I first sat on the original site, on the day when I was quizzed, it's an IPR matter, doubting my very ability to deal with an IPR matter. The same did not deter me, but such instances can be unnerving. Due to the confidence I had in my ability, I soon not only authored a number of judgments in IPR, but co-authored India's first and only appellate post-trial judgment in patent law with Justice Nandrajog, which was referred by the learned ESG. And also became the first woman judge in India to be recognized amongst the top 50 in the world in the IP matters in the year 2020. <laughs> I'm grateful to my colleagues, Justices Vipin Sanghi, Siddharth Nudul, Manmohan, Rajiv Sahai and Law, Rajiv Shagda, Suresh Kaip, Nazmi Waziri, Vibhu Bhaku, VK Rao, Jashwant Verma, Yogesh Khanna, Rekha Palli, C. Hari Shankar, Chandradhari Singh, Subramaniam Prasad, Pratik Jalan, Sanjeev Narula and Manoj Kumar Ori, with whom I have shared committees on the administrative side. Their valuable contributions during the discussions have broadened my outlook. My best wishes to Justices Sanjeev Sajdeva, Pratibha M. Singh, Naveen Chawla, Jyoti Singh, Anup Jairam Bambani, Talwant Singh, Rajneesh Bhatnagar, Jasmeet Singh, Amit Bansal and Purushind Kumar Kaurav, with whom I enjoyed close association even though we were not together in a committee or the bench. Delhi High Court is a dynamic and progressive court, though half of the judges on the bench today may be one year or less than a year older on the bench, but each one of them has his or, his or her own capacities, capabilities and intelligence and they are all performing their duties very effectively and efficiently keeping the flag of Delhi High Court high. My best wishes in these endeavors to Justices Nina, Krishn Bansal, Dinesh Kumar Sharma, Anup Kumar Mendiratta, Sandeep Kumar Jain, Swan Kanta Sharma, Tara Vitasta Ganju, Mini Pushkarna, Vikas Mahajan, Tushar Rao Gadila, Manmeet Pritam Singh Arora, Sachin Datta, Amit Mahajan, Gaurang Kant, Saurabh Banerjee, Anish Deyal, Amit Sharma, Girish Katpalia, Manoj Jain and Dharmesh Sharma. All through this journey of my life, what I am is because of the unstinted love and support of my family. Our father taught us honesty to work, honesty to client and honest, above all honesty to yourself. He taught us to stand up for what is right, even if you are standing alone. He always used to say, if you cannot speak what is right, then don't be a lawyer. There are many other professions you can pursue. Our mother taught us compassion, endurance, and helping others in need. It is a blend of these attributes which have shaped me what I am today. <laughs> my family has been a pillar of strength with unstinted love of support of my brother, sister, their spouses, and our eight children, Udyan Vibhor, Aastha Paridi, Nitya Tushar, Manas and Sanya and their spouses. I have never desired anything else in my life. <laughs> Whenever I was in trouble or in a fix, they were the ones who guided me, supported me. I do not know whether there is rebirth. But if it is, and God asked, I will say, put me back to this family. <laughs> Throughout my career, whether as a lawyer or a judge, I always made an endeavor to dispose of the maximum. In the last one year of my tenure, we were able to dispose of nearly 300 custody appeals. This would not have been possible without the active cooperation and untiring support of my esteemed bench partners, Justices Nina Bansalkrist, Mini Pushka, Anish Dayal and Poonam Bamba. The duties as assigned to me could not have been performed without the actual cooperation and assistance of all my staff my private secretaries, the officers of this court, namely Rajinder Singh, VK Mittal, Rakesh Kumar, Sandeep Bhatt, Anil Bhatt, Vandana, Atish Goel, who worked with me even till late nights. I am also grateful to the other officers who have worked with me 
Mamchand, Lalit Jolly, Rajesh Kumar, Hari Kishan, and the associated staff, Arjun Singh, Rahul, Abhishek, Devinder, Ujjwal, Chandan, Chandarpal, Subir, Jagat, Vijay, Satish, and Sudhi. What we see as a functioning by the judges in rendering judgments requires a strong infrastructure, which is in the form of around 3,000 employees of this court. And without their active cooperation, it is not possible to perform the duties. I thank all the officers of the various branches. I am grateful to the law researchers who have constantly supported me in my endeavors. The journey from standing on that side of the bench, arguing matter after matter, reading reference after reference, on this side of the bench, listening matter after matter, reference after reference has been very fulfilling and satisfying. The nostalgic feeling of being able to touch the lives of number of people with, a lawyer, with positivity as a lawyer and as a judge helps me move on to my fourth innings. The biggest gift to me by God was my daughter Nitya Gupta, who is in turn gave me a gift of a son in the form of my son-in-law, Anu Chakravana, and a granddaughter, Savri. After having worked for 39 years and untiringly for the last 23 years, on 27 June 23, when I demit office, I don't propose to unbuckle my shoes. In my fourth innings, I still propose to work, but at a slower pace and spend rest of my time with my grandchildren, especially with the Savri. On demitting the office, I can confidently say to the God and myself that after having been appointed as a judge of this great institution on 23rd October 2009, I have performed the duties of my office with the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment without fear and favor, affection or ill will, and that I have upheld the constitution and the laws. In the end, I'm not saying goodbye. Because I was a part of this great institution as a lawyer. I am a part of this institution as a judge. And I will continue to be the part of this institution by my judgments. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you. 